All right, so we got to get those house plants ready, come from outdoors to indoors. So how do we do that, Ms. Lori? Well, the first thing I do when I'm, it's about time to start looking and inspecting for bugs. You don't have to bring them in right now, um, but, but when they start talking about frost, you need to get any tropical okay. plants indoors. They will not tolerate that. But I've started at home kind of looking underneath my leaves and just inspecting them for, for the different kinds of pests that'll get in there. Um, there's, there's kind of four disasters that can be on house plants of pests. Okay. Um, mealy four bugs, disasters, okay. Let's mealy go. bugs, um, scale, okay. spider mites, and white flies. Yes. Those seem to be the mm -hmm. ones that are the indoor one. And okay. once you bring them in and it's nice and warm and there's no, um, no, uh, what am I trying to say, predators, yeah. they blow up. Okay. And so inside it, it really can really be a problem. So I've started spraying mine with neem oil and a light horticultural okay. oil because I found on my inspection, I found scale and white flies. So um, oh, I'm going to start spraying them now. And if you're using biological controls, you kind of have to do them often. So it's time to start now if you want to bring them in before frost. So start now. Okay. okay. And so when, it, when they start talking about nights getting down into the um, 40s, it, it's time to bring them in. About time. Yeah, yeah, because you never know when that first night of frost is going to come. Okay. Uh, so will the plants survive in an unheated garage? What is a typical question we actually get? Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of them will. Um, you know, especially the ones that are a little bit hardier, gardenias, um, those kind of things. But now if you've got a real tender tropical, unheated garage might not be the best place. And they also need to have light. People want to uh -huh. poke them back in the corner uh -huh. and they, you know, plants don't grow in a cave. Let's, you know, they just don't grow <laughs> okay. in a cave. They need some natural so light. Need some natural light. And so some of them will. But if it's something that's very dear to your heart, you might want to go ahead and bring it in the house where it's got heat. Okay. Wow, you, yeah, you're right. Okay. It's now a good time to start cutting them back, though. Not really. Not really. It, it, sometimes you have to just to bring them in the house. I've got a ficus tree that I've had since 1982. Oh, my and goodness. And so it gets a haircut, a pretty hefty <laughs> oh. haircut every year when I bring it in. Um, just I have to to get it into my, my sunroom. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Um, but, but now if you cut things back, they're going to send out a flush of growth. And mm -hmm. because they're going to get less light, that's going to be long, leggy growth, and it's not going to be attractive. It's better to cut them back in the spring. But again, you may have to just to do insect control and those kind of things. Okay. Try to be judicious with it. Try to be judicious. 1982? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a pretty good size ficus tree. <laughs> I've had that <laughs> oh, ficus tree longer than some of my friends. Oh, that's my goodness. Yeah, that's a long time. Okay, so how do I revive a poorly performing <laughs> plan? I'm pretty sure a lot of folks want to know about that. First thing I would do is knock it out of the pot and see what's going okay. on with the roots. Mm -hmm. um, it could be root rot or it could be, um, you could have things living in there. You know, sometimes <laughs> ants will move in. Right. And so a lot of times I'll go up and kind of kick my pots before I start messing with them and the ants will get irritated enough they'll come out. Right. If you do have an ant nest in a tropical plant pot outdoors, just water it. Water it, water it, water it. They'll get irritated enough they will move someplace else. Just make sure they're not moving into your next house plant yes. pot. <laughs> That's right. um, and I also poke around for toads. I've been known to bring a toad into the <laughs> house before too because they'll be up underneath that soil. Um, <laughs> are the little tree frogs. Tree frogs, yes. yeah. <laughs> and the little lizards. The little flat silent. on my um, yeah. husband's forehead when he was sitting in the living room one oh, day. Oh, wow. boy. <laughs> that would scare you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so make sure you check those houseplants when you're breaking them <laughs> indoors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That but, yeah and then it may need to be repotted. You okay. know, plants need to be repotted about every two years. That soil just years. tends to kind of go away. And so we check the roots first and maybe repot it. Okay. If, if it doesn't, if it's not full of roots in that pot, it's better to do that in the spring as well because you're going to stimulate a bunch of growth. Okay, and when we say in repot, we're going up to the next pot size, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we either divide before, the plant up into divide. smaller plants, or if you want to keep that whole plant together, then at least an inch on either side, so two inches bigger. Okay, now what about fertilizing once we bring them back in? Do we need to do that? Do you need to worry about that? Best probably not to. You don't not want to. to stimulate a bunch of green growth because, mm -hmm. again, it's going to be reaching for sunlight and they'll get long okay. and leggy. Um, better to fertilize March through October with tropical March plants. October, okay. And I guess we definitely need to probably water... So you can actually, could you water them outdoors before you really start bringing them indoors? It makes it messier and it makes them heavier, but I do uh, it yeah. because that's going to be the last really good watering they get. When you're watering with a watering yeah. can, it's not going to be like watering with a with the, the rose right. on the end of your water wand. Okay. Yeah. I guess that makes so sense. So I do, I would go ahead and, and then it, you well, get your out. work out when you're bringing them in that okay. way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess it would make it heavier, but yeah, you get and that last good watering. you can also get the dust off of them and the cobwebs yes. by watering them really well. Okay. All right. Now, now what about when they're indoors? How would you, you know get the dust off the leaves then? Um, I what don't. They just, get just <laughs> <laughs> they just get dusty. Okay. I've got a lot of house plants to be sitting there wiping them off. But okay. if you only have a couple, you can actually take it just a damp paper towel and wipe it. Because that is how it gets its food. Right. I mean, it's yeah. its photosynthesis. Right. And the more dust you've got on it, the less it can feed right. itself. Um, so, but you know, there's a leaf shine that you can use on them. But yeah, I've again, I've got, you know, like a hundred house plants. They're not going to get shined at my house. <laughs> <laughs> don't have quite the time, right? No. 
Okay. Now, did you have something you wanted to show us about your Well, this your one I, I call an indicator plant, and okay. it's, it's a spathophyllum, and what it does yeah. is it will absolutely wilt when it needs water. So it tells me it's time to get up off my tuchus and water <laughs> my plants, okay. but it doesn't die right away. It'll just kind of just hang over the edge of its pot, yeah. and it's like, it's, so I call it an indicator plant. Good house plant, yes. will do well with low light, hard okay. to kill. Um, it's a good starter plant if okay. someone's looking for something. And I always see that, you know, in somebody's mm -hmm. home. Yeah, a good mm -hmm. starter plant right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. And this one is a tratoscantia. And uh, what I wanted to point out about it is it's got hair on its leaves. Mm -hmm. And as a general rule, that means it's going to need less water because that's its, its natural um, defense against uh, sun pulling all of the water out of its leaves. Less so most water. Things, okay. less, less water. water. So I water that at home probably once every two weeks and maybe even once a month in the middle of the winter okay. when I bring it in. So do you wait until the soil is completely dried out? Mm -hmm. For that one, For pretty that much. One? Okay. Yeah, the other ones you want to wait until it's about down to your first knuckle. If you poke your finger in, if it's dry at the end of your fingertip, right. um, then you want to give okay. it some water. Okay. And then this one I brought is the pregnant. An onion plant. Yeah, it's just let's talk about cool. that one. Yeah, just... um, it's not a beautiful plant by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> but and hopefully they can get a close up of this. But it's got little bulblets that come out underneath this skin. And so you can see them after a while, they'll just pop off, and that will grow a whole plant. And so they're kind of slow growing. And again, it's not a beautiful thing, but it's sort of a novelty. It's kind of fun to have around. Kids like it a lot. Okay. Conversation. Conversation yeah. piece. Yeah. That's right. how, how slow of a grower? It's fairly slow, and but you can see how long this foliage will get, and it'll get, if it's taken good care of. This one it was in a greenhouse and was getting bumped around a lot, but the foliage will get you know four or five feet long if it's if it's in a, if it's happy. They get pretty okay. pretty good sized. Okay, all right, and I see you have some. Uh Perlite, right? Perlite, yeah. What I was going to say that. is that, you know, you don't always have to bring every plant in. Sometimes you can just take cuttings off of them. Uh, this is an albutalon. It's called flowering maple, uh, okay. and it's not a maple at all, but it's got um, leaves that look like maple leaves. And then it, it does have flowers on it, which are very pretty. It's you pretty. have to get kind of up close and personal to enjoy them because they, they sort of nod and hang down. But what you can do instead of digging that plant up and bringing in all that soil and stuff is just take a cutting, and I'll put um, seven or eight of these in a pot and then just let the other plant die. Let frost kill it. It's the same plant, so if you've got sentimental value to it, it's, you know, there's, it's still the same plant. Reduce a little bit of the leaves just because there's not roots to pull that up. And then you can put it in your rooting hormone powder and then just poke it in perlite. You can use coarse sand or you can use um, soilless potting mix. That's what I used to use in the greenhouse. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have bark in it. Okay. And so it's a, seed, it's a seed mix rather than actually a potting soil because okay. there's no bark in it. But you can just stick them in. I'll fill that whole pot and then put a little mini greenhouse on it with mm -hmm. a Ziploc baggie and keep it out of direct sunlight. It will cook them until it gets some roots on it. And then you, you can tell, but you just tug on it and it'll have resistance. And that means it's got some roots on it. And then that next spring, I'll just stick that whole thing back out in my garden. And it works. And it works pretty well. How about that way that? you're not bringing in all those bugs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because you definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. 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 Once they've been outside, they, they can be kind of buggy. Which is why scouting is so important. Yeah. Yeah, you, I mean, you, have to, you have to inspect you know, your plant well, material before you bring them indoors. Also brought a loop. Yes, yeah. You please can get don't. a jeweler's loop or you can, or these are through any science thing. And what you do is you just look for, look for varmints and critters. Yes. Spider mites are hard to see. Mm -hmm. And so with this, you can see them or you can take a piece of white paper, hold it underneath there, hit yeah. it, and you'll see little black mm -hmm. spots on there. And another thing you can look for is that um, honeydew, stickiness yes. on the yes. leaves. Yes. That's how I knew I had a scale mm -hmm. problem was because my leaves were sticky. Right. And last year, I had enough of a problem that my floor was actually sticky. So I had to bring out the big guns for that. And and white flowers are easy too. You just and then they just, they just kind of puff <laughs> off, white make cloud. a cloud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, yes, that's good. You have the alcohol here. That is for sterilizing your this pruners. Is sterile, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Before Make you sure go you from plant to plant, you definitely need to, to sterilize your pruners because anything that's wrong with this plant, you can bring over that's here. Right. Bug eggs, all that kind of stuff. So okay. even if you only had scale on one plant, if you're not careful, you can end up with it all over. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ms. Lori, we thank you much for the information. Mm -hmm. These master gardeners are good, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs>